Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to my presentation. My name is Ching Kai, a PhD student from Hong Kong. I'm very happy here to introduce our recent work on static by finding, pinpoint, fast and precise sparse value flow analysis for many lines, lines of code. This is a joint work by the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and the South Brella, a technology company from China. In 2014, the most glamorous security bug, Hubbleed, was discovered in OpenSSL, affecting about half a million websites. Like many common issues, including invalid use of memory, such as double free, user free, no point differences, as well as 10 issues, including XSS, SQL injection, command injection, the Hubbleed bug is actually a kind of sourcing problem. A malicious input which is a source, then propagates to a sensitive instruction, which is a sync, causing the problem. However, we observe that it is still difficult for existing approaches to detecting such a complex source sync problem. Looking to the Hartley bug, we find that it, is, it exists in a typical industrial sized project with about half a million lines of code, 92 directories, over 3,000 functions. The bug itself is also very complex. It, is, it spans across seven files over 13 sound lines of code, 44 functions with intensive point operations. So the and the function that causes the problem, memcopy, is frequently used in the project in over 600 places in over 100 files. So to find such a complex box, it's just like to find the needle in a haystack. So a proxy tool must be very fast and can scale to million lines of code. It must understand the memory operations and deep calling context so that it can detect the complex bugs uh, hidden behind the complex operations. It must uh, understand the complex pass conditions so that it can prone invisible paths so that it can keep in high precision. Existing approaches can be put into two categories, dense approaches and uh, sparse approaches. Dense approaches like IFDA's framework, certain Callisto, they check value flow based on the control flow graphs, analyzing the program statement by statement. So uh, unavoidably, they will analyze a lot of irrelevant statements. So for example, in the, on the control flow graph, the value flow from I to J has nothing to do with the red statements. So if we, if we follow a dense approach, we must take the red statements into consideration, leading to some performance issues. According to a recent report, a dense approach may take six to 11 hours to check only one sourcing problem, such as null point differences for a program of 680 thousand lines of code. On the other side, existing research has shown that sparse analysis can be much cheaper because it tracks value flow along with the debt dependence. For example, along with the debt dependence on the graph, the value of i can directly pass to the value of j, skipping the irrelevant statements. However, modern software is uh, filled with intensive point operations. So, to build the debt dependence, we must have a pre-computed point analysis to compute the points to results. For example, to build the debt dependence from I to J or the value flow from I to J, we must query a point analysis where the P, the point P is an alias of Q. So although the sparseness allows for a more efficient analysis, so uh, we may have to perform a very expensive point analysis at first to build the debt dependence, which we refer to as the point trap problem. To explain the point trap, let's review the conventional design of the sparse value flow analysis. Uh, we call it a layered design because it can be split to three, three independent layers. First, it does the point analysis independently and then build the debt dependence according to the points to results and finally check the value flow on the debt dependence graph. Obviously, the quality of the value flow analysis depends on the quality of the debt dependence and further depends on the quality of the point analysis. So if we want to have a precise value flow analysis, we must build precise debt dependence. So we must have a precise point analysis. 
However, it is well known that a precise point analysis is difficult to scale, so we may have a bad performance. On the other side, if we want to have a good performance, we, must, uh, perf we may have to perform an uh, imprecise point analysis, so we will have imprecise debt dependence on the debt dependence graph. So finally, we will have a uh, value flow analysis with no quality. Existing approaches uh, to achieve the scalability, they have to use imprecise point analysis, say flow insensitive, context insensitive, unification best, or they choose to only solve easy pass conditions and don't check, uh, fully check the branch correlations. In result, there will be many false edges and false paths on the dead dependence graph, which will lead to many false positives when and detect bugs. So this is not, uh, not acceptable. Our contribution in this paper is to abandon the conventional layered design so that we can escape from the point trap. So finally, we can achieve the efficiency and the precision at the same time. Before going into the technical details of pinpoint, let's see how fast and how precise it is. In one word, the performance of pinpoint is aligned with the industrial requirement. It is very fast. It can finish checking MySQL in 1.5 hours with four path sensitivity and six level of function calls. As a general framework, we actually have developed many checkers to de detect different sourcing problems. So currently we have detected more than 100 series bugs in about 30 extensively checked open source projects. Some bugs we detected have been hidden in the project for more than 10 years. So Pinpoint also has good precision. It reports less than 30% false positives. The benchmarks we, un we use to evaluate Pinpoint include the 12 spec standard program benchmark programs, as well as 18 GitHub trending projects, including Git, Vim, MySQL, all our commonly used software. The sizes of these programs range from a few thousand lines of code to nearly 8 million lines of code. The largest three projects we use are Firefox, a commonly used browser, MySQL, the most commonly used, uh, uh, most popular open source relational database, FFmpeg, uh, commonly used audio and video processing software. In our evaluation, we used a single commodity 16-way server, and we don't not only compare pinpoint with academic tools like SVF, the most recent sparse value flow analysis, we also compare pinpoint with industrial tools like Clown Static Analyzer, Facebook Infer. We want to highlight that we, we set a very high bar to quantify the bug detection uh, abilities. That is, on, a report is counted as a true bug only if it is confirmed by the software developers. Pinpoint can detect the very complex bugs. This is an example. One of the four used after freeze we detected in MySQL server. This bug is very complex. It exists in a function with about 1,000 lines of code function. It, it relates to at least 36 functions in 11 files. Because it is very complex, the developers uh, can't confirm it until they use uh, a very happy debuggers, and uh, then they can uh, confirm its reality. Pinpoint can detect a very serious bugs with high impact. Uh, this is a double free bug in ICU. This bug has been in the code for more than 10 years, affected hundreds of organizations and companies because it is so serious, so it has been assigned with a CVEID. In terms of scalability, uh, we observe that the memory and the time cost of pinpoint grows almost linearly in practice. Uh, as we can see, the R square of the regression curves is uh, larger than 0 0.9. For MySQL, a 2 million lines of code project, it can finish checking in 1.5 hours. For Firefox, a 8 million lines of code project, it can finish checking in 4 hours. So Pinpoint is very scalable. In terms of precision, uh, at the time of writing, the Pinpoint can detect the 12 real use after freeze with only two false positives. It can finish checking in uh, five hours for each project. In comparison, the 
most recent spark value flow analysis, SVF, reported uh, more than 1,000 uh, false positives without true positive uh, because it uses a very imprecise point analysis. Uh, for some projects, it uh, fails, to check in, fails to check in 12 hours. This is also because it uses uh, imprecise point analysis, which leads to the space explosion on the data dependence graph. We also compare pinpoint with clone and infer. Clone and infer can run faster, can, check e can, um, can finish checking each project in one hour, but they report the many false positives with, uh, with only a uh, with only a, a few true, pos true positives. They can run faster because they analyze each file independently, while Pinpoint and the SVF link all compilation units into a single one and do a complete uh, pro a whole program analysis. This is also why client infer can detect uh, complex bugs across different uh, compilation units. In addition, client infer don't uh, don't use a full, fully functional SMT solver, only solve uh, easy pass conditions, so they also report many false positives. So the last question is how can we achieve such encouraging results? Our key observation is that in the conventional layered design, we actually compute a lot of data dependence that are not related to any bugs we are going to check. So actually, in the point analysis, we compute a lot of context, redundant context paths and the point information. To reduce the such computation redundancy, our solution is to blend the layers. That is, instead of performing the point analysis independently at first, uh, we spread the computation of point information across the whole program analysis. In the first step, we only build a function level data dependence graphs in which we memorize non-local values as extra function parameters and the return values. And we also memorize complex pass conditions. And in this way, we don't need to maintain calling contexts and we, we can avoid exhaustively solving pass conditions for every pass. In the second step, to, avo uh, to avoid exhaustively computing into procedure uh, information, we stitch these function level graphs on demand only when necessary. When stitching these uh, function level graphs, we connect uh, the interprocedure point information, context and the past information, and uh, send this connected information to a SMD server to determine whether there is a bug in the program. Let us use our uh, example to illustrate our idea. To build the function level of uh, that dependence graph, we have to transform each function to its pure function counterpart. Uh, this is a function. The function test, uh, tests the value stored in a non-local memory uh, pointed to by the parameter p. If the value is, zero, is less than zero or it is, it is too big, then we set it, to our, set it as a constant 10. So because this function references a uh, non-local value, so we insert an extra parameter x to represent the non-local value. And uh, also because uh, the function modifies a non-local value, we insert an extra return value y to represent the value after running the function. So after uh, purifying this function, we can build the debt dependence graph, the local debt dependence graph. We have the debt dependence from x to v because we have the assignment x to v. And we also have debt dependence from v and 10 to y because the final value can be, uh, final value y can be 10 or v. Also, we have the debt dependence from p to the dereference statement because p is used in the statement. Here note that we don't solve past conditions, but encode the past conditions uh, with the data dependence, labeling the h with the condition to avoid solving the past conditions. In the caller function, to, because the function signature, signature of test is changed to reflect the change, we have to introduce two auxiliary variables, a and b, to, uh, to represent the value before and after running the function. So 
the value A actually represents the value before running the function test, and B uh, is the value after running the test. Looking to the function, actually there is a sourcing problem. Uh, sorry, here uh, after inserting the octronary variables, we actually can build the data dependence graph because the value B actually represents the value uh, stored in the memory after running the function test. So the mem copy actually uses the function B, uh, use the value B. So there is a data dependence from B to the mem copy function. And uh, there is a data dependence from Q to the mem, mem copy function because Q is used in that statement. Actually, there is a sourcing problem in the program. First, uh, we get a user input, which is stored in the memory pointed to by Q. So actually, the variable A is, represents the user input integer. And the, and the user input integer may, uh, may propagate to the mem copy function call. As we know, if, there, if the integer is too big, then it will cause a buffer overflow problem. So we can regard the uh, value A as the source and the mem copy function as the sync to determine whether uh, there is a source sync problem in the program. In the second step, we stitch uh, to verify the source, to verify whether there is a source sync problem in the uh, program. We have to stitch this uh, uh, stitch these function level gra graphs uh, together only when necessary. We check value flows from the source A, so we connect the interprocedure data dependence from A to X because uh, by matching the actual and the formal parameters, and we know that. Uh, the value of A then flows to the value of X. Along with the data dependence, we know the value of X then flows to V, flows to Y. Then we can connect, in the, we can connect the interprocedure data dependence from Y to B by matching the return value and its receivers. And we, finally, we know the value A may propagate to the mem copy function. Uh, dur uh, during which actually the value flows, we can connect the pass conditions and uh, finally then send it to a SMT solver to s determine whether there is a bug. Note that actually there is another uh, de interprocedure data dependence from Q to P. We didn't need to build it and we actually don't build it because it doesn't relate it to the bug we are going to check. So actually we save a lot of resources that originally must be used to compute the interprocedure information. So a pinpoint can be much cheaper than uh, conventional approaches. So as a conclusion, we call our uh, design a holistic, holistic design because it is spread the uh, computation of point information across the whole bug analysis stages and uh, we only compute the precise and the expensive information only for value flows related to the vulnerabilities. So we want to highlight again, no independent point analysis. Uh, we need to dodge the point trap in the sparse value flow analysis. Uh, in terms of future work, we, we would like to reduce memory cost because currently we have to uh, use a lot of memory to store the function summaries and we want to model more libraries to reduce false positives. Uh, finally, we want to resolve the function pointers so that we can detect uh, more complex bugs. If you are interested, you can scan the QR code to uh, download and use Pinpoint for free. There is also an online demo. Uh, we, we provide a community edition that provides uh, beautiful GUIs to help you use and uh, check uh, programs. So thanks again for your attention. Uh, thank you for the great talk. This is Ur from University of Maryland College Park. Uh, so my question is, can you comment on the memory usage of this tool and in particular, uh, what was the, uh, the cost of memoization and the Firefox and MySQL experiments? What was the memory usage for those? Yeah. Memory cost. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it actually cost for MySQL. It actually cost about uh, uh, thirty gigabyte for thirty gig GB. Okay. Yeah. For Firefox, it actually cost about uh, one more than one hundred GB to store the uh, function summaries. Thank you. I had a quick question. So you made the point that it's important to have this blended analysis instead of like, you know, like instead of sep have doing a pointer analysis separately. Have mm -hmm. you done a comparison against this three, what you call the three-layered approach? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, we uh, compared to the sparse value flow analysis, the most recent sparse value flow analysis called SVF. It uses uh, flow-sensitive point analysis. It follows the conventional layered design. Uh, even though it uses uh, flow-sensitive uh, point analysis, it can't build the data dependence graph in 12 hours. So it actually, because it uh, computes many redundant information, so it is very slow. See. Another question is, have you like, evaluated the relative importance of, for example, like being path-sensitive in this context? Uh, sorry? Have you evaluated, so your analysis is path sensitive, correct? Yeah. yeah. So have you evaluated the relative importance of being path sensitive? So if you aren't path sensitive, how does it affect your false positives? Uh, you mean the, if we use a path, path sensitive point analysis? No, if you, if, you get, get, if you get rid of path sensitivity, how does it affect your results? Uh, you mean if we don't use path sensitive analysis? Yes, yeah. that's what I mean. So in our experience, it will report many thousands of false positives if we get rid of the path sensitivity. Yeah. Uh, Shijie from University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I have a question in terms of the scalability. Could you please go back to the slides you show the scalability trend? Uh, uh, yeah, from that slide, it seems like uh, when the code size is relatively small, it uh, actually increase uh, exponentially and only happens this when you one have a, this page? Uh, no the this page uh, yeah this one uh -huh. so if you want to hear when the code size is uh relatively small actually except for the the pretty big ones uh it'll increase like a you know exponential scale and only in the case you have uh, around the eight meanings then uh, that trend seems like a linear. So, do you observe any patterns for those small ones? Why they increase like uh, exponential ones? Why it, uh, suddenly for a quite a huge one it uh, uh, seem like linear? Uh, you, you mean when there, uh, if we remove Firefox, then it may increase exp exponentially? Yeah, seemingly so. Yeah. Uh, actually, um, uh, I don't think so, because we actually. Uh, we, we try to find more uh, benchmarks to to uh, to evaluate the scalability. Whether if we even though we discard Firefox, uh, it is also in a linear. Uh, it also grows in almost linear. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So I'm curious, uh, how many vulnerabilities did you discover in FFmpeg, your third largest benchmark? Uh, how many bugs? Yeah, uh, yeah. We actually uh, currently we detect the three now pointed differences in uh, FFmpeg. Yeah. So then, what's your false negative rate? Because FFmpeg is full of vulnerabilities. We we find hundreds, literally, on a monthly basis. Uh, I think it is very difficult to evaluate the false negatives because we don't have the ground truth uh, whether there are real bugs in a project. Right. Actually, we use a, a junior test, a, a very simple benchmarks that have ground truth. Uh, for, this, for those programs, we can detect all the bugs, so th although that is not a real project. Yeah. All right, thanks. All right, let's thank the speaker one more time.